Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be talking about GraphQL and also show you guys how exactly how to implement a GraphQL API, exactly everything you need to do using Node and Express and we're going to be talking about mutations, queries, everything related to that and I'm going to explain everything in about like 30 to 40 minutes. But yeah, before we get into the implementation, I just want to give a really quick overview of what GraphQL is. And before I actually get into that, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So yeah, let's start talking about what exactly is GraphQL. So as you can see right here, GraphQL is basically a query language. And what do I mean by that is, it's just a way to organize your API so that you are always making queries or making uh, requests for, muta for, for mutating the data, changing the data, receiving the data. And it has some very clear differences to a REST API, which is probably what most people code. And I laid out here two of the main differences in my opinion and I'll show you guys exactly what they mean. The first is, imagine you have this project where you're getting data from uh, users in Reddit. You can see clearly right here, I got this from Google, but you can see clearly right here, uh, you're getting data from users. In a REST API, you would make an API request to Reddit and pass over here, for example, you want to get the user K and uh, K nothing. This is a username. You want to get the data for them. So Reddit obviously contains a bunch of data about the user. So they might have the username, the common karma, the I don't know the the number of, like the the total number of upvotes, the the day the user was created, that kind of stuff, the email, that kind of stuff, a bunch of data. But with GraphQL, you can specify specifically what you want to receive. So I'm making an API call to the Reddit API and maybe their their api is returning a bunch of stuff but if you're you making a graphql request we can pass i just want to get the username the common karma and the created iso which i don't i think is the day the user was created and you can see that this is the data that is returned it is returned in a very structured way and only the information that we requested for it to be returned from our client is returned so this is the client this is the response right so this is exactly the idea of structuring your query, your, your queries using GraphQL. And it will become a lot clearer as we go into the implementation. But finally, the, the other difference is that I think it's most like noticeable in the beginning is that normally with the REST APIs, you would, for example, create, if you're working with a user, you would create an endpoint for slash API slash users, right? If you're working with com, like creating a, an, an endpoint for, I don't know, friends or comments or likes in a project, then you would have a slash likes, slash comments, slash friends, that kind of stuff, right? But with GraphQL, there's only one route. It's called slash GraphQL, and all of your stuff works around this route. And it will become, again, clearer as we go to the implementation and why we actually do this, but it is really awesome. I love GraphQL, and I'm really excited to show you guys how to create your first GraphQL server. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring a much awaited by my subscribers tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a GraphQL API from scratch using Node and Express. And basically we're going to be using like building a whole application around this fake data that I have over here. You can see it's called mockdata.json. It's a bunch of like it's a thousand different entries. Uh, for different information about a user, you can see that each user has a first name, an ID, a last name, a password, and an email. And by the way, like these are all fake. If you want to check out how to get fake data, uh, you can go to a website called mockaroo.com. It is really awesome. I always download fake data from there, and I use it to test my applications. So you can see right here, we have a very simple API. Um, actually, it's not an API yet. It's just a Express server that is running. I can come over here. I can go to my local host. I can run everything, and that's fine, right? So, what can we do now? We need to start implementing our API. So, in order to start creating our GraphQL server, we need to install two packages. The two packages we need to install are um, npm install GraphQL, just simply get GraphQL. So we can get all the types involved in GraphQL and you'll understand about that later in the video. And also Express GraphQL, which is where the library we're going to be using to create our Express GraphQL server. I already installed both of them, so I, I won't not install them again, but you can just press enter and it will install everything. So after we installed both of those packages, we need to start by importing those packages. And you can see that I have the data over here. Imagine that every time I'm dealing with this piece of data over here, 
It could be like somewhere in application where we would be making a query to a database or we would be inserting stuff into a database. Like I'm just replacing a database with this fake data, but in normal applications, everywhere I do something with this data, you would be doing something with your database. So now that we have installed both packages, we need to actually import those packages. So let's come over here and say const GraphQL equals to require and then let's import GraphQL. And then let's come over here and say const and we want to import um, the, a variable called GraphQL HTTP. Let me already import this. This is just to create a GraphQL server. Um, GraphQL HTTP um, equals to require um, express GraphQL. By the way, uh, in the like first, I'll show you guys how to create uh, the server, like everything in this single file over here. The reason for that is because I don't want to complicate stuff. I just want to go straight to the point. And then at the end, I'll show you guys how to actually organize a GraphQL server, like a, a GraphQL application. I'm going to divide it into different folders and you guys will see exactly what I mean. But initially, we're going to do everything in this file just so you guys can have a picture of what each thing does. So now that we imported both of these packages, you can see we imported GraphQL and we imported the GraphQL HTTP, we need to actually create our server. So how do we create our GraphQL server? Well, we have to come here to the bottom, like it has to be at the bottom of your application, or after you created all the schemas and all the mutations and queries, which again, I'm going to be talking about that later in the video. But basically, we have to come right here at the bottom and say app.use. So we're applying this. And then we got to put our endpoint, right? Just like we were, uh, if we were creating a route, uh, in the beginning of the video, I explained to you guys that GraphQL actually has only one route, a single route called slash um, GraphQL. This is the single route that, that it has. You can only access stuff through this route. So we have to apply it over here. And the route we're applying is the GraphQL HTTP and over here we can pass two pieces of information. First of all is a schema, and then it is a graphical variable that we can ask. What this means is basically, there's a graphical user inter interface uh, or a GUI that comes with GraphQL with this packages that we installed. It is really awesome, it allows you to visualize um, all your queries and be able to test them. So GraphQL is basically that. If you want, if you don't want that, then set it equal to false. But I always use it. I think most people always use it because it's really handy and you'll be able to see everything happening. And schema, we obviously haven't created our schema yet. So how how are we going to create that schema? Well, that's going to come uh, much later. But basically, after we did this, we can start building our GraphQL server. So this should be fine. We just need to do something to create this schema object over here. And what exactly is a schema? Well, a schema is just a, a combination between um, mutations and queries. And what do I mean by mutations and queries? Well, if, you, if you're if you interested in learning GraphQL, you've probably heard those words before. Queries is just like in a database, it means getting information, getting data, right? So when I, when I write a GraphQL query, I'm trying to get information, receive that data. And when I have a mutation, I'm trying to update, create or delete data. So mutations are basically create statements, delete statements and updates, and queries are basically get statements. So we have to have a combination of both of them. So to create um, a GraphQL schema, we can just come here at the bottom and right, right before this app.use, and let's create a variable called schema, which is going to be equal to new GraphQL um, not like this, actually like GraphQL schema. And by the way, I'm going to, the reason why it's putting it like this, because we're going to import some stuff from GraphQL, but GraphQL schema. And instead of here, we have to pass two variables. One of them is query, which we currently don't have. And the other one is mutation, which again, we don't have. So this is the variable we're going to pass over here. And as I mentioned, it needs to be a combination between queries and mutations. So we have to create those two variables somewhere in our application. So for now, let's just create both of those variables. So over here, let's just create um, something like usually when you create the first um, query, like the major query, the, the, the variable representing all queries, you usually call it root query. So let's just call it root query. And it's equal to a for now, let's not set it equal to anything. Let's just 
set it equal to a word called query, a string called query. I just don't want to complicate stuff, but then let's also create a mutation variable. Mutation equals to a mutation. Obviously, they aren't uh, strings, they are objects, but I just want to show you guys exactly what I mean by that. Well, you can see right here that we can now just grab root query, put it over here, and mutation and put it over here. So this is the basic idea of our schema. It will just be two variables united like this, and we can pass the schema over here. But now we got to start working directly with what GraphQL is actually about. Well, GraphQL, we, we, we need to define a predefined schema. And what I mean by that is that when we come here to our mock data.json where we have the users, we have to define a GraphQL schema, which includes the data, the ta like the, the properties that a user might have, right? So we need to create a schema for the user or a type definition for the user. And you've probably heard that word before if you're interested in GraphQL. Type definition is basically we need to define a type for the user. A user type might, might have an ID, a first name, a last name, an email, and a password, just like our, our, our JSON object there uh, has. So in order to create one, we have to come over here and before anything, actually import stuff from GraphQL. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going just to put a comma over there and import um, some stuff from GraphQL. The first thing I want to import is GraphQL um, object type, which is used to, um, it's not actually, oh, I wrote it wrong, object type. It, this actually is used to create the types. So create a user, for example, then we want to create a schema. If you remember, we we over here use the variable called GraphQL schema. So we have to import that from GraphQL. Then we also want to import um, some types, right? So uh, if you want to use, if you want to create a type for user, the user might have an ID. So an ID is an integer. So we have to define it as a GraphQL int. And also a, a first name, email, password, last name, they are all strings. So we have to actually uh, import a GraphQL string. There's obviously many different types. And if you're interested, you can like definitely in your applications, you would use them, you can also create specific types. And that's something for another video. But basically, these are the basic types that we want to use in our application. So now that we have all of that, we can start creating our query. So to create to create a query, as I mentioned before, we're going to be using the GraphQL object type variable. And we're going to come over here and say, um, root query equals to um, new graph ql object type and inside of it we can pass um, basically the type of the of the like of what we're doing right so what exactly are we doing we just this is a is a object type that represents the queries so we can give it a name a name and usually we'll call it root query type and then also it will have some fields. So fields is something that is very, it's standard. The fields basically represent what are the different queries that we might want to have. And this will become clearer. But basically, for example, imagine we want to create a GraphQL statement that just returns everything from a, from a, from the, like all the users, everything from a database, then we might want to create a field called get all users. I'm not going to create it right now because I still need to define the user type, but basically get all users. That might be a field. And if I want to get just a user, uh, like based on, on their ID, I can create a field called get user by ID. This is like in, in conversion to a RESTful API, this is like creating two routes, one for getting all the users and one for getting the users by ID. So here are all the fields related to queries. So all the queries that we might want to have in our application. However, something is extremely important over here. We have to create our user type. And what do I mean by that is we need to create our type definition for user. So let's come over here at the top and create a variable called user type. It's just almost like you're creating, you're defining that users have to be this will this way. So to create a user type, you need to say new GraphQL object type, like, like we did it before and just pass an object. And over here, we have to pass a name just like we also did before. So the name for this will be probably just user. I, I usually recommend just putting the name of the database table you have for this, but let's, let's just call it user. And then just like before, we have to add the fields, but the fields is a bit different here. We have to, the, the standard for this is you have to put a, col a column 
and pass in a function inside of here. And this function will just contain an object. I know this is weird, but it will contain an object. And here is where we define the columns for our user type. So we want to have an ID. And this ID will be of type GraphQL int. This is why we imported this variables right here because of this, we need to define exactly what we want. Then let me just copy this over here so that we we can add more like we have ID, we have first name, last name, email and password. So let me just change this to first name. Let me change this to um, last name. Let me just do this like this last name. And then finally email and then password. Okay, and obviously they aren't all <laughs> GraphQL ints. Actually, they are most of them are GraphQL strings. Uh, because they're just strings, right? So this is how you define a string. And now we have actually created and finished our user type, the type definition for our user. So that's perfect. Uh, that's perfect. What we have to do now is we have to use this user so that we can manipulate it and get information from it through our root query. So here is where we start creating our queries. So in order to create our query, let's come over here. And let's just say, um, well, the first thing, the first query that we want to have is just get all users. It's just a query where if we try to run this query, it's going to return all the users in our database, or in this case, all the users in that uh, mock data.json file. So let's just say get all users and pass an object over here. So get all, all users will be of type. And this is something that a lot of people get confused. What exactly is the type that is going to be returned? Type here is what is going to be returned, right? So if we go to our data, is it actually user? Are we going to return a user? No, we're going to return a list of users because we want to get all of this data right here. So instead of saying we're going to return a user for this case, we can say that we're going to return a graph graph QL um, list. And we have to import this. Um, oh, I, it already imported automatically, but you have to import GraphQL list, we're going to import a GraphQL list of user types. So we can say over here, user type, this just means that it is a list of users. <laughs> and then we have to pass the arguments for this function. And what do I mean by arguments is, well, we'll, we'll like, do we accept any arguments for this? Um, maybe not, like, we, we maybe we do, maybe not. So for example, just for demonstration purposes, let's imagine that we wanted to have a way so that like this query, we had to pass an argument, we had to pass something to the query, like an ID or a name, then we'd have to come over here and say, um, we want our argument to be for example, an ID. And the type of the ID is, um, I don't know, like, GraphQL int, as I mentioned, right, our IDs are GraphQL int. So this is just an example, right? This is how you would actually pass a, uh, an argument. But but in this case, we don't actually need to, we, we just want to receive all the users in our database. And finally, we have to pass the resolver. So resolve is just a simple function, which contains two arguments, parent and args. I don't want to go much in depth about parent, but args is actually just accessing whichever argument you put. For example, if we want to get users by ID, and our argument is just an ID, so we have to get have access to the ID. Over here, we can access that ID by saying args.id. So that, that's basically the idea. It's an object containing all the arguments that you passed in the function. And this is actually a function, right, as I mentioned, over here, we, we can write every single piece of logic that we want to, to have in order to return this query. In our case, we just want to return all users. So very simply, we can just say return the data. So over here, if you had a database, this is where you would make the, the like, if you have a MySQL database, you would make the select all statement. Or if you have a Mongo database, you would make the, I don't I, like the, the find um, command just to get the data from the database. But in our case, we just want to return user data because that's the fake data. And I just want to see all the data in my in my, my project, right? So this is actually how you create your query. If you want to create more queries, you can just copy this, put a comma over here and add more. I'm not going to create more right now. But I just want to show you guys that this is how you actually do it. And now that we have our query done, let's start working with our mutations. So mutations, as I mentioned before, is just a fancy way to saying that you want to create update and delete stuff, or delete stuff, right? It's just a way to 
change to mutate the data. So let's do the same thing we did with um, the queries. Let's create a graph QL object type. And again, let's pass an object inside of here. But the name for this, let's just call it mutation so that we it's, it's pretty clear that it is a mutation. And then we have to pass as always fields. But the fields, it's very similar to what we do with queries. So each field will be a different mutation. So if you wanted to create a mutation like create user, we would come and add a field called create user for updating is update user for uh, deleting will be a field called delete user. That's the idea, right? Similar to queries. So let's just create create user right now. And for create user, we would have to pass some types of information. For example, we have to pass the type and the type for this would be user type, right? We're, we're trying to create a user and we have a type definition for user called user type. And then this is the most important part about mutations, the part that a lot of people get confused, we have to pass arguments, just like we did with the query, we have to pass arguments here. And why do we actually have to pass it? Because imagine we are creating a user. So we have to pass the first name, the last name, the email, the password, right? We have to do that. So let's come over here to pass arguments, you just pass an object. And inside of it, we can define all the things that we want to add. For example, I want to when I make this mutation, I want to receive the first name. And as I mentioned before, it is of type GraphQL string. I wrote this completely wrong, but yeah, GraphQL string. Then I also want to create a last name. I'll just copy all of this. And by the way, you notice that we're not asking for the ID, right? Normally, when you have a database, you don't ask for the ID. Um, it just creates automatically. Um, but yeah, that's just something that I wanted to say because I'll, sh I'll actually have to create the ID individually because we have we're using fake data. So password is also a field. So now that we have put our arguments, we have to similar to queries, pass our resolver. And the resolver is always gets parent and args. And now args is more important than ever because args now have access to this right here. So just so so arguments will be like if we say args dot first name will grab the first name that the person passed in the mutation args dot last name is the, the the last name email similar to like if you're an express and you say rec dot body or rec dot um, headers this is where you pass that kind of information right so what the only thing we have to, we want to do actually is imagine we have this array right over here we have this not not this we have this mock data array in my case and to add data to this database, we just have to push a new element to the array. So I'll just say user data dot push, right? However, you can see that each element has an ID that is increasing by one. So we have to actually handle that we have to individually add plus one to the ID. So in our resolver, what I want to do is I want to access the user data uh, array. And this is different for you. If you have a database, if you're using a database, you can just come over here and say something like, um, DB dot query, I'm not, like if you're using MySQL, you can say DB dot query, uh, insert um, into you know what I mean, right? So this is where you put the database logic to insert and create the user. But in our case, we have an array. So I'll just say user data dot push. And I want to push uh, a new user to the user data uh, array, right? The, the, the user data um, object. But the thing is that um, as I mentioned before, the ID has to be managed individually. So I'm just going to create a field called ID. And the ID will always be the length of the array plus one. So currently, the length is 1000. So the next element will have ID 1001, right? So let me just do that. I'm just going to say user data dot length plus one. So I'm just saying that the ID that we're pushing the, the user that we're pushing has the ID of the length of the, the, the array plus one, then we want to pass a first name. And the first name will be of args dot first name, right? Because we're just grabbing the, the argument being passed. Um, then as I as we know, it will be last name, and will be args dot last name, then email. And again, args dot email. And finally, password, which will be args dot password, right? Args dot password. And I think that's it. That's we're just pushing the new element to the to the array. And after we did this, I just want to return something. So what I want to return is actually, let me just see, I just want to see if we actually inserted the correct information. So let's return args. And you'll understand what I mean by return it basically just like when you're using graphical or 
when you're using, it's almost like you're saying res.send if you've used an, a, a RESTful API before. You're saying res.send, you're, you're sending the information back. Obviously, usually when we create a user, we don't actually need that information. Maybe we need the, the username or the ID or the email. So I'm just sending back the data that we passed so we, we're sure that they, it actually works. And honestly, this is basically it, right? So we created our query, our mutation, and previously we already put those together in our new GraphQL schema over here. We created the schema object and we used it in our GraphQL HTTP to create the server. And this, everything related to all the queries and mutations are exist in this schema object right here. So if we save this and we run this, so I'm just gonna say node index.js, um, Okay, let me see what happened. It said uh, missing initializer and const declaration. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do actually? Um, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna separate it. I don't know if, it, if that was kind of confusing for you guys, but yeah, this is definitely not, not what I wanted to do, but I'll just delete this over here. I'll import GraphQL from here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say const. I'm gonna import this again from GraphQL. So like this, GraphQL. QL. So what I'm doing is I mean first importing the GraphQL variable, then I'm importing each of this from the GraphQL variable. I don't want this to be confusing, but this I just changed it a bit because it was giving some errors. So this is basically it. I'll just save it right now. Let's open this again and let's run it. Now you see it says server running because here at the bottom we have a server running when, when it's listening to the port. And let's just open this up so you guys can see. You can see that the server is running. If I go to localhost 6969, it says cannot get, meaning that it is actually working. However, how do we actually access our API? Well, with GraphQL, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it is very simple. There's only one route called GraphQL. So let's run this and you'll see that automatically this GUI appears and it's beautiful, right? This is GraphQL, the thing that I mentioned. And why it, is it, a, why, like, why is it cool? Because it's almost like a, a way to test your API. Like w when you're using Postman or you're using, I don't know, um, Insomnia or other like API testers, uh, GraphQL already comes with one built in into your local host. So that's perfect, right? So the first, thing that we can test is we can test to see if our query is running. And to test if a query is running, you very simply just write here, for example, um, query, and then you put uh, the curly braces, and over here you put the name of the query. So the query that we created, the only query that we created is called get all users. It just returns all users. So let's say get all users, and let's put another curly braces over here. And now we can put over here simply what information we want from each user, which is perfect. We don't actually need to get all the users automatically. We can just put here, like we will get all the users, but we don't need to get all the information. I don't need the ID, right? I really don't need the ID. I need only the name. Let's say I want the first name, I want the last name, and I want the email, right? So I'm just putting here first name. This I'll get for each user, I'll get each of this information. Let's run this. And you'll see that when I run it, it says data, it returns a JSON called data, get all users with an array containing all the users, and each user contains only the first name, last name, and email. If I put here password, and I run this again, you'll see that now all the users also include the password, which is perfect, it's one of the main benefits of GraphQL. And you can see clearly, it goes to the bottom. And keep in mind the last user, it's called Adrian's. The reason why I'm saying this is because now we're gonna mutate, we're gonna add a user, we're gonna create a user and add it to this, and we'll see if the user actually appears here at the bottom. So to run a mutation, it's kind of a little bit more complicated, but it's not that hard. To run a mutation, you just write here, mutation, and you put like this, open and close at curly braces, as we did before, and you put the name of the mutation. So what exactly was the, the name of the mutation we had? Well, it was called create user, right? So we can just put create user, and we can pass the arguments over here like we would do with a normal function. So the first argument we want is first name. So let's pass Pedro, for example, that's my first name. And then the second argument is last name. Let's pass Machado, which is my last name. And email, let's pass, I don't know, um, like and at subscribe. That's a recommendation. Um, and then let me come over here and just pass a password. My password will be not my actual password. 
Okay, so we just passed all this information for create user and at the like after it we have to pass like this. We have to put a curly braces again at the end. And over here, very simply, this is almost like a function called create user. We're passing all the arguments. Over here we can now pass, just like we did with the query, the information that we actually want from each user. It will return each user, but we just want to we just want to see what we want to return. We don't actually need to put anything, but let's just see, right? I want to grab the first name. I want to see if the first name is right, the last name, and maybe the email as well. Okay, email. Let's run this. You'll see that it says create user. It ran perfectly. It also returned the first name for the user we created, the last name for the user we created, and the email for the user we created. But the most important thing is checking to see if the user was actually created. How do we check? We run a query again. So query get all users, and we want to see the first name. I also want to see the ID this time because I want to check to see if we actually made the ID work. Um, first name, last name, email. I don't know. I'm just putting whatever here and password. Let's see this. Let's run it. You'll see every single user appears. But if we go right at the bottom, you can see that the last element is not Adrian's anymore. It's actually Pedro, which has an ID of 1001, an email of like and subscribe, and a password of not actually my password, meaning that we actually added the mutation worked. And this is extremely important. So this is the basic idea of a GraphQL project, right? So you, you have mutations, you have queries. Mutations are just ways to, ma to, to mutate stuff and queries are just ways to receive stuff. However, normally, if you would structure your project, you wouldn't put everything, ever, like everything in the same file. So I'm just gonna show you guys quickly how I would actually do it. So the, what I would do is I would create here a folder called, um, let me just come over here and say um, schema, schemas. And in schemas would have a, index.js and then I would have a type definition type devs so type devs is actually just the user type like it's a definition for the user and we would have to define this and the index.js in the schemas would be the file that would export everything so exactly what I mean by that is let's come over here and let's create copy all of our logic from our index.js and let's put all of them inside of our schema folder. So in order to do that, we're going to copy first the user type, this over here, and we're going to put it inside of the type definitions folder. Let's create a, a file called user type.js. And let's just paste this at the bottom. And what we want to do is we want to module.exports user type. By the way, this is just so you can organize your project well. Um, if, you're, if you're confused by this, don't worry, then try working the other way first. But this is just a way to organize your project better, right? And as we mentioned before, we want to import all of this kind of stuff together at our that we have over here. So let's import GraphQL and this at the top here. And now we have access to all of them. And we don't actually need the schema. We don't need the GraphQL list only this ones. So we now have a folder just for type definitions. If we want to create a new type definition, we can put it over here. So let's close this. And now let's come here to our index.js on this one on the schemas part. What do we actually put here? Well, in this one, we put all of our queries and mutations. And we actually create our schema. So let's copy this and let's put it over here. And as I mentioned before, we need to import all of this and just paste them at the top here because we have we need to have access to all of them. And what is important is we have to create our queries, we have to create our mutations. And at the bottom, instead of creating a schema like this, we're just going to export this. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say module dot exports equals to new GraphQL schema. So we're just exporting this. This is again, just a way to organize your your project. I'm just creating everything inside of here. And the most important thing is we need to actually import the user type because you can see we're using user type over here, but it doesn't exist. So to import user type, what I do is I just say user type if from require, and we're going to go back to type definitions slash user type. So we're just importing the user type and using it in this application. So now that we close this, we don't actually need any of this. If I recall, yeah, we don't need any of this. So that's perfect. We don't need to use this. And um, the only thing we actually need is, let me just delete this. The only thing we actually need is, oh, I also need to get the user data and paste it over here. So I need to import the user data in our, in our schema because we're obviously using it in our project. So the only thing we actually need in our index.js is the, 
the schema, right? So let's say const schema, because we're using the schema inside of here, we're going to import the schema from this index.js file over here, equals to require dot slash um, schemas. And if I recall, I think this works because this is an index.js instead of a schemas, we don't actually need to say slash index, we can just leave it like this. And it knows because it's an index.js. And we're passing the schema over here. Let's check to see if this works. This is just a lot more organized, as you can see, let's check. No, it didn't work. Um, let me check why. Um, module not found. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just say schemas slash index.js. Let's see if that works. Let me clear this. Let me run again. No, it's giving me some errors. Um, I'm going to check this errors and I'll come back in a second. Oh, guys, so the error actually is that I was <laughs> importing the mock data.json incorrectly um, from our from somewhere in our index.js. It's not this one, the, the schemas one. It's just that you can see I'm importing mock data from like all, assuming it's inside of the schemas folder, but it's actually not. So we need to go back twice. And I think this is right now. Let me see mock. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's right now. We just need to get out of schemas and mock data.json is over here. Let's run again. And server is running now. Let's try the same things. Let's just run this query again. And you'll see that it shows everything again, meaning it's everything is working, our query is working, our mutations is working, and our project is a lot more organized. You can see our index.js is very small, not, not the schemas one, the, 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 the project one, you can call this app.js, server.js, whatever you want. But you can see it's very small, our project is organized, we have a type definitions, we might want to have a folder just for mutations, a folder just for queries, whatever you want, just know that it's great to organize your project in a, in a Organ organized manner, right? So that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna make more videos about GraphQL in the future, especially making GraphQL videos with like React, which is, I know it's a very complicated topic. I remember studying it, st starting to learn it. And I remember I was just super confused. So I just wanted to make this introduction video talking about how to create an API with GraphQL. And futurely, I can make more videos integrating it with a front end like React. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I really appreciate it. And yeah, I see you guys next time.